In this video, I'll show you how to solve the centers on your 7x7 cube. Welcome to the 7x7 tutorial. Solving the 7x7 is very similar to solving the 6x6. There are a few small differences along the way and I will highlight those, but otherwise we're going to be using the same method to solve the 7x7 as we did the 6x6, which is the reduction method. So again, solving all of our center pieces, so then pairing up all of our edge pieces, and then finally finishing off the 3x3 stage. So there are a few things you need to know when solving the 7x7 centers. So with the additional layer, there come more different types of pieces, and I'll explain those shortly. The first thing also to remember is that because there are an odd number of layers on the cube, that means the middle center on each side is a fixed color, so it can't move. So just like the 3x3 and the 5x5, if the middle sticker on each side, for example here, is green, that means this side will be the green side at the end of the solve. So when building our centers, looking at this 5x5 grid, there are a few other different types of center pieces. So in addition to the middle center, there are these inner edge centers, which are in yellow. So looking at the innermost 3x3, there are the inner edge centers, which are the yellow ones, and here these inner corner centers, which are these white ones. So if we extend from this inner 3x3, there are some more different types of pieces along the outside here. So these blue ones are the outer corner centers, here, 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 and here. And then we have the outer edge center pieces. So these are these orange ones, like this. And then we have the oblique centers, so these ones, in between the blue and orange center pieces. Beyond knowing this and getting used to the different types of center pieces on a 7x7, solving the actual centers of a 7x7 is very, very similar to that of a 6x6. So essentially on a 6x6, we solved the centers using 1x4 lines. Here, we're going to solve the centers using 1x5 lines. And there are three different types of 1x5 lines we can make on a 7x7. So there's the inner most 1x5 line, which includes this central center piece. Then there are the two 1x5 lines adjacent to that. And then there are the two on the outside of those. So those two, those two, and then the central inner 1x5. So for beginners, it always helps to solve the inner 1x5 first and then expand from that. So that's what we're going to do. So let's start out by solving, for example, the yellow center. We've got these three and this central, so inner edge piece. So I can just move this out of the way move this across and move this back down and now we have a one by four on yellow so we need to find this outer edge center so there's one here and so what i'm going to do is move it up to this position here and now we've solved our innermost one by five bar so after solving that first bar what i'm going to do is solve a bar directly adjacent to it so how we need how we're going to do this is we need two inner corner centers, which are these pieces, and one inner edge center, which is that piece, and then we'll need to attach two obliques to those center pieces. But the first step for a beginner, I think, should be to pair up two uh, inner corner centers with one inner edge center. So this one here, and this one here. So now we have this one by three line, and here is an oblique we can attach to it, move it out of the way, across and then down, like that. Now we have one, a one by four grid and a la the last oblique, which we need to attach is here. So we can do that. And now we have a one by five, we can just put it up into our yellow center. So next up, we'll do the same thing for the other adjacent one by five. So I'll find the two inner center pieces here and this one. So these are the three inner center pieces, this corner center, this corner center and this edge center. So I'll do a U prime and move it into this layer which is adjacent to the yellow face. And now I'll find some obliques which we can attach to these to form a one by five bar. So I've got this one. I can just do an R U two R prime to pair it up there. And now I have this one as well which goes in this position. So I can hide it away, do a U prime and then do an R move. And then what I need to do is just place this next bar into the yellow face. Okay, so now that we've done this inner 5x5 five five bar and these two adjacent ones, we need to do the same thing for these two outer 1x5 bars. So let's find um, 
bits and pieces which we can use to do this. So an outer 1x5 bar is comprised of two corner centers, one edge center, and two of these oblique pieces. So I see here I have this one, this one, and this one already lined up for me. And I can insert this oblique here with a slice move like that. So now I have four pieces in a row and another one which belongs with these to create a 1x5 is up here. So I can just slice it back down like that. And now I have a 1x5 like this. And I can just move that across and put the 1x5 in with the rest of the yellow layer. So now we need to solve the last 1x5. I see this piece, this piece, this piece, and these two pieces. So probably what I'll do, because these two are already aligned, is attach this one first, like that, and then use these ones to finish off these two. So I've got this piece here, which belongs down here. So I can do a slice move to place it there, move it out of the way, and then slice back. And lastly, I need this outer edge center, which is up here. So I can do a slice move, move this bar out of the way, slice back, and then bring that one by five bar down. And now we've solved our entire yellow center. So after building this center, we go ahead and do the exact same thing for the opposite center. So here we've done yellow. Now we need to do the same thing for the white center. So again, build the inner one by five bar, then two adjacent one by five bars, and then finally the two outer one by five bars. And I'll let you do this on your own. So now that we've done the white center, we've got the yellow and the white both solved, and we're going to solve two more centers along this middle slice. So it's really up to you uh, in deciding which one you want to do next. Um, so for example, here, I see that I've got, you know, these two red pieces. So this outer edge center and this inner edge center. So I can bring them down to the red face and begin working on my red one by five, and then look for another, you know, inner edge center here, this one and then an outer edge center down here, like that. So now I've made my one by five on the red face. I need to do the remaining one by fives. And I remember to build those only using slice moves along this axis, as well as outer face turns, so as not to mess up your already solved centers on the left and the right. So again, to do this, you'll need to be comfortable with intuitive block building techniques as shown in the 5x5 tutorials. So if you haven't practiced those, you might find this a little bit difficult to start out with, but with enough practice and as well as getting comfortable with the types of pieces on a 7x7 and moving them around, you will improve. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this red center. Okay, so now that I've finished the red center, we're going to solve a center directly adjacent to it. So in this case, I'm going to solve the green center next using, a, using the exact same approach. And as we solve more center pieces around our cube, there are a few more restrictions. So obviously now we need to be mindful that we need to solve the green center whilst not messing up the red center. So just be careful about the different moves that you do to do that. Once again, we will solve the green center using one by five bars. So the center most one by five bar then the two adjacent to it, and then the two on the outside. So now that we've solved the first four centers, we come to the final two centers, which can be a little bit more tricky, especially if you're not used to bigger cubes. So I'll show you a systematic way to solve these final two centers now. Like on the six by six cube, we're again going to focus on solving the front face. And what I'm going to do first is solve this innermost one by five bar. So I've got three pieces here like this. Um, here is one inner edge, which I can move to the front face like so. And now I need to attach this outer edge to this position, like so, to create my first one by five bar on the front face here. So after solving this inner one by five bar, 
what we need to do is attach a 1x5 bar directly adjacent to it. And we can do this intuitively just using kind of wide R moves, so 3R and 2R and U moves. And if we need to, we can use F moves or F2 moves to access pieces on the front face. But given the amount of pieces on which are available to solve this next bar, we shouldn't necessarily need to do that. And for the most part, these first few bars will be pretty straightforward. And it's only when we get to solving the last two bars that it gets a little bit trickier. So in this example, I see I've got these three, and in fact, this piece here as well. And so what I can do is just use this inner corner center, and this will take a little bit of time to get, to get familiar with, but I can use this center, I can slice it away, do a U move to set these four up, ignoring everything else, just focusing on these ones, and then slice it back down. And now I've got these five, which I can insert here by doing wide R, U2, wide R prime, like that. So next up, instead of creating another one by five adjacent to this uh, inner one by five, what we need to do is create an outer one by five bar. So we've done the one in the middle, one right next to it, and then what we're going to do now is create an outer one by five bar. In this case, we have these two and these three. So all I need to do is just hide these two away like that, bring these three across, bring these back down, and then I can insert this and move them over to the left-hand side with R prime F2 R like that. So solving that outer one by five bar in that previous example was quite easy, but you won't always have it that easy. Sometimes it will be, but sometimes it'll be a little bit more challenging and you will need to play around and try and figure out, okay, how do I solve these one by five bar, this one by five bar pieces without messing up anything that I've already solved, particularly these two bars. So I guess we can take a more step-by-step -step approach. So if we look here, for example, I have these two. So this is already a solved block and this one, here. So what I can do is just move these over to this left hand side straight away, move these away, move this one across and bring them back down. And now I've got three pieces here like that. And if I want to attach, for example, these three and this one to create a one by four, I can take that out, move it across and bring it back down. And then finally, I need to attach one more corner center to these four. So I can do that with the one which was in this position. After we've solved these three one by five bars on the front face and put them over into this left hand side, the next step is to solve this one by five bar. So adjacent to the innermost one by five bar, we need to solve this one by five bar. And we can do this just using wide R moves. Uh, so three wide R moves, two wide R moves and U moves. So we don't need to do anything fancy. We can just play around and sometimes it will take a little while, but just using these moves, these moves and U moves, we should definitely be able to solve this next one by five bar. One way for beginners to try and approach this is to firstly pair up these three inner centerpieces. So we've got this one and these two. So what I can do is take this out like that and then attach it and move them over to this side. Now what I need to do is attach these to this oblique to create this one by five. And then I can insert this one by five into this position. So here's just another example of solving that fourth one by five in this position. So I've got these two inner center pieces and this inner edge piece. So I can take those out and set them up like so. So I've solved these three and luckily enough, this oblique came along with it. And then I can attach this oblique to it, do a U and then do wide R U2 R prime to insert that bar. So solving this final one by five bar isn't as easy as solving the other bars and it's definitely not trivial. So the first step that we need to do is look and find this uh, outer edge centerpiece. So this piece, which is here, um, if you put it up into the top layer, it's, it's this one. So yeah, the outer edge center. And what we need to do is effectively attach this outer edge center to one of these two obliques. So make them right next to each other so that their, their pieces are touching. If you're in a situation where this outer edge center is already connected to one of these obliques, then that's fine. You can skip this step. But for a situation like this, what we need to do is 
put the outer edge center here and then one of the obliques either in this back left or back right position here and then just do an M prime U2 M like that. And now you'll see that this outer edge center and this oblique are both connected to one another. You may also have a situation where this outer edge center is connected to both of the obliques and it forms a one by three, in which case that's the best possible case and you don't need to worry about this step. After we've connected these, what we need to do is solve these two as well as the outer corner centers, so this corner center and this corner center, into this front right position so that we'll solve four of the last five pieces on our orange face. So what we can do here, for example, is um, replace this one, so move this one up like that, do a U2 and then bring it back down and now we have four of the final five orange pieces which we can insert with our U2 R prime and this is going to be very similar to what we had what we've done on a five by five cube so treating this block these three pieces as just one piece and treating these outer corner centers also as two individual pieces. We can use the same sorts of techniques that we do for the final one by three on a five by five to solve the final one by five on a seven by seven, uh, except for this final piece, of course. Once we've solved four of the final five pieces on our last two centers, what we need to do is move the two unsolved pieces over to this right hand side. And again, we're going to use commutators to solve these oblique centers like we did on the six by six. So in this case, what we need to do, if these two centers need to be swapped and they're on the bottom position, this one and this one, what we can do is do a wide R move, do a U move to move this across, bring this centerpiece up with a slice move, bring this one by five across and back down, and then bring that one by five across and back down. Finally, the other possible situation which we can find ourselves in is these two need to be swapped with one another to these upper oblique pieces. And again, the algorithm or the, the technique we would use to do this is move this one up, do a U move, slice upwards to create this one by five bar, move it across and back down, and then move this one by five bar across and back down. And then we've solved all of the center pieces on our seven by seven.